Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and we have another exciting guest today for you. We have on our show today, we have Mr. Grant Parr, and he is a mental performance coach, and he is the host of the 90% Mental Podcast. Grant, my friend, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing, I'm doing really good, man. I know we, we talked a little bit last week, and uh, I had so much output going out uh, with my work, and I had to take a few days to recover, and now I'm, I'm, I'm normal. I'm feeling good. My frequency is feeling good right now. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Grant, I'm just curious to hear from you, just before we even get into you sharing your story, just at the, on the topic of how to, having to adjust to just a changing environment. I, I, I mean, because I feel that you're pretty, pretty versed in, in, the, in this subject. I'm just curious to hear from you, like, what are your thoughts on that? Or, or what would you suggest for somebody who's trying to figure out how to adjust to a constantly changing environment? You know, it's, it's, inter- it's an interesting question just because I think it's, it's kind of hard, especially if we're talking about the pandemic or just, we're just talking about just working in different environments, um, which is a good thing. I, I like that. I think for me, just to answer the, que- the question personally, Um, I spent 17 years in corporate America in sales. And so for 17, two decades, for the most part, Mm. my whole job was to go in and out of environments. So I was always in different cultures and and supporting different initiatives. So I've trained myself over all those years to like, to see this change. Um, To me, it's not that big of a, a drastic change at all. For me, it's like, I, I see I see all this as an opportunity. Um, I allow my I think what allows me to actually move with change, and I think with and what kind of my message is is to have a relationship with your breath, and and also to meditate, but just to really connect with your breath. I think the more you can connect with your breath, you become more present. But the more that you are engaging with your breath. Um, also having a meditation practice, you're, you're creating a lot more emotional space. You're relaxing things. You're allowing yourself to move with different types of changes instead of being stressed out and tight and full of anxiety and worry and doubt. It's really hard to move emotionally and physically. So, um, so I think just to answer your question, I think I've had a lot of practice in my corporate life, my prior life, but I think right now just practicing breath, being present allows you to move from, from different changes and different environments. Certainly. And can you talk just a little bit more about the type of work that you do, Grant, and, and the type of clients that you serve? Yeah. So as a mental performance coach, I'm, I'm primarily been working with professional Olympian, collegiate, high school athletes um, and coaches and teams. And basically what I'm doing, I am, what I'm doing is I'm creating a process for my clients that they can use for whatever that situation is, whether if it's pregame in the midst of the competition and also after, so as far as reflection. But all my work is getting these athletes and teams and coaches to align their thoughts and emotions, to empower themselves in the moment so they can make the best decision for themselves or to refocus themselves in the moment. So I do that with in the athletic domain. And then it's pretty much the same with, I call them corporate athletes. I work with executives um, and also corporations uh, providing mental skills training and leadership training. Mm, excellent, excellent. So now I want us just to turn back the clock a little bit, Grant, because you said you, said you work with, you, you said you worked uh, in, in the ath- athletic domain as well as with, with, with your corporate athletes. F- for you, sports and and just having uh a heart for 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 sports started for you at a very young age talk tell us a little bit just about you know how 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 this 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 passion and this fascination that that you have with sports and like when did this take place 
you know, the fascination was, it started young. Um, I, I actually was blessed with a father that was, he coached almost all of my sports. If he wasn't coaching them, he was, you know, the president of, you know, our youth football league. Um, and my, I had an older brother too. So at the age of seven is when I realized I started to kind of get just drawn into sports and it was baseball. That was kind of the thing that got me first, you know, uh, excited to be an athlete. But the cool thing about just the era that I grew up um, mm -hmm. and the way my dad coached us and gave us a lot of space to try things on, I had the opportunity to play baseball, basketball, football, soccer, track. So I didn't specialize um, in anything until I got, I think into high school is when I started to realize kind of where I was really good at and where my love was, and that was football. And so I started getting more in football, but I was still, you know, playing baseball and I was still running track. But uh, as a quarterback, I was just drawn to, to that uh, position and to the sport, and then it took me into college. But, uh, but it started back when I was about seven years old. Wow. So I like, I really like what you said about the fact of you, you, you had the opportunity, you had the space to try things on. And I think that um, now, just, just with this up and coming generation, I think this is, they're in a tough spot just with them seeing millennial generation and even like before that, the boomers, because we, like, there's no secret that the boomers, it was, you know, go to school, get a job, retire. Millennials, we saw some of these individuals go to school, get the job. But some of us were like, that's not necessarily working for us here. But what do you think, like with, with this generation now, would you say that you think that still would apply as, as far as process and as far as experience, like that they should be trying things on and seeing what works in, instead of like getting nailed down into a particular arena or something like that? You know, I would say, you know, my initial reaction is yes, they should try on as, as much as possible. But what's interesting is that the, the landscape that we live in right now, it's, it's tough to compete against some of the, the organizations, athletes, parents, families that are so specialized. So when you have somebody that is all they're doing is baseball and, you know, outside of league or outside of the, you know, high school baseball, they're playing 65 games in a summer. Mm. I mean, you know, that's, that's crazy. So when you have somebody that is, has all those reps and has all those, has more opportunity to show film, um, when you're trying to compete for a spot, when you're trying to compete for a scholarship, whatever the motivation is, it's kind of hard when you're trying all these things on. And that's why I think there's a lot of people out there that are so opposed to specializations for many reasons, for health reasons, you know, you know burnout, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, not only on the, on the soul, but also on the body. But I think um, that's where I understand specialization. I know there's like, there's one thing that there's, there's some things that are very positive about it, but man, you get so much out of sport and sports, plural. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I played football, but man, the reason why I, be, I became the person I became was because I had the chance to try on different environments and learn how to communicate in, in different languages. I mean, communicating in soccer, even though there's something similar to communicating in other sports, but it's different when you're mm -hmm. communicating in basketball and soccer and football, it's different. So, um, so I don't know. I think it's my, to answer your question, I, I think we should go back to the old school way of just trying on a lot of things, but there's just a lot of money in sports now. There's a lot of money in specialization and, mm. and people are motivated differently now. Yeah, I would certainly agree with you. Um, there, 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 there is a whole lot of money um, in, in sports. And I mean, when you see that somebody, somebody is making X amount of dollars, then you probably wouldn't want to try on many other things. You would just want to get to wherever, to wherever route they went to get to, you know, this high, high paying level of comp, uh, just compensation and, 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 and things like that. But Grant, I'm, I'm curious to hear from you, like, what, what is your passion behind you doing the work that you do? Well, it stems off from a, a few different um, factors. And I think the core of it is because I get, I get, to, I get to be in service. 
and mm -hmm. and I get to do what I was put on this earth, and that is to share my energy. I mean, it's, to me, it's all about energy. Um, and then there's all this other stuff behind it um, that falls in place. But it's just being in a role where I can actually really share my my background my expertise, but really giving people my energy. But where it started um, was actually because I got hurt in football. Uh, when I got hurt, I had a creating injury uh, to my left hip in junior college. I kept playing through it, and I couldn't finish my last year uh, when I was playing at Sonoma State. Um, I probably could have, but I, I just, after 13 years, you know, my hip was hurting, my shoulder was hurting. Mm. I, I ended up leaving the game um and, and not to get all into the details because it could be a, a long story but my transition of sport was, wasn't positive um i was frustrated i was pissed off and i didn't get i get to, i didn't get to make the choice to leave the sport i love it mm. my body told me so i spent about two decades really upset and frustrated and pissed off and i didn't take care of the emotional work and uh, I spent almost two decades not, I, I couldn't tell people that I was an athlete. I couldn't tell people that I was on TV where we broke records and where I broke records. I, I, cause I, I was so far removed because I was still dealing with the frustration. So when I went through hip replacements, I had two of them on my left hip. Um, one left me handicapped. And after the second one, I got my life back. My, every, my, my health came back together. I started to run again and started doing all these really great things. And it was just at that moment where I realized the age of 40, I was like, you know what? I got to reignite myself, reinvent myself and kind of spark that old grant, get that competitor, get that warrior mindset going again. And so that's what fueled me to kind of, to get into the work. And then when I listened to Desmond Howard one day on ESPN talking about a sports psychologist, um, it was between two sales calls. I was like, what is a sports psychologist? And I remember <laughs> home and I researched it. And then two months later, I was enrolled in at JFK University um, and got my master's in sports psychology. But it was all, it's all about being in service, sharing my energy, and then going through just two decades of pain um, dealing with a, a career-ending injury. Yeah. What, what word of advice would you give somebody if if they're in the front stages of like where you were like just when the just when the injury happens because the ultimately the like, like we talked about before the purpose of this podcast is to serve and support student athletes as, as a resource so if there's a student athlete out there who who is injured they, they have a career ending injury right now and they're just trying to navigate what they're supposed to do next what what word of advice would you give them now looking back and, and being on the other side uh of where you are now I would say, first of all, you, you are not your injury hmm. and, and you are not your sport. Your sport is what you do. It's not who you are. And I think that's, you know, understanding your identity that, that allows you to transition out. If it's a career ending, really truly, truly having a good sense of who you are makes that transition a little bit easier. But then also guess what? It's time to do some work. Like go get some help. Like we, I don't care how awesome things are in your life. We all need work. Mm. We're all in progress. And if, it, it, like me at least, if I spent 13 years in a sport that I love. Well, that's a lot of that's a lot of work. It's a lot of identity creation. So mm -hmm. you need to work some things out. Even if you did and in a high note in your career for whatever reason, you need to work this thing out. So. Um, I just understand that, you know, you're not your injury and go get some work, go get some help. Um, make sure that you're sitting the rest of your life um, in a positive, in a, in a positive way. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't say it any better because I think it's so necessary. And just like if we take it to sports and we look at, you know, some of the elite players and some of the elite teams, when teams are winning, everybody's at the top of the hill but of course the little details and the things that should have been changed in practice or should have happened in the game that didn't nobody really notices those when you're winning but then when you're losing it's like okay well this is what's wrong that's what's wrong and then the same with your with the situation you just shared grant just understanding that there are always is a level of progress and improvement that can be taking place and uh just just be moving forward and you said sports psychologist. How, how long has, has sports psychology been around? Or is, is, this, is this fairly new? Or Because 
I'm just not sure if, if I've heard the term sports psychologist too often. And maybe that's just me being naive. Help me out, Grant. Help me out. So uh, it's actually a great question. I think um, it's been around from my recollection, like it's been around since the 70s, I would say 1970s, maybe the 60s, but I would say more or less, we started to see it in some sports, mainly in the Olympics. Mm. Uh, I started seeing a, a tinge in the 80s in, in baseball. Um, but now it's, from my perspective, just because I'm in the field, I think when you think about uh, mental performance coaches, mental skills trainers, sports psychologists, um, even PhDs with a sports psychology emphasis, it's, it's becoming more in vogue, which, which is a great thing. I, we, need, we need more of us out there. Um, but I also feel that our language as a, as a society is changing. We hear, we hear the word mindset all the time and mental toughness and grit, mm. and honesty, which are words that live in sports psychology and, you know, and other silos of psychology as well. Um, but I think we, we're, from my perspective, we haven't gotten there yet where, where sports psychology needs to be where it needs to be, but we're moving, we're definitely moving in the right direction. So that's probably why you haven't heard uh, the, you know, the title sports, psychology, sports psychologist, but I'd say Major League Baseball is like ahead of the game. Like in, in Olympics, the Olympic committees, they're ahead of the game. Uh, NBA is getting there. They're like, they're, they're looking really good. Personally, I think the NFL needs to, to kind of put a push on it, mm. um, but they're doing a really good job with mental health right now. So um, and tackling those issues. So, um, yeah, I think it's been around, I think I would say, say around the seventies, as far as it being kind of introduced to society. Okay. Okay. And then with you saying that it's growing and with you saying sports psychology isn't, isn't where you think it should be. What do you feel is missing? What I think it's missing is it's not about just providing my services to the elite. Um, we're missing the mark on getting young athletes, student athletes, the mm. reason. So when you think about at the high school level, youth level, there's just not enough money to, or maybe the money's not being allocated to resources like myself. Um, even, you know, colleges, I think colleges are doing a better, they're doing a, a, a lot better job uh, with using people like myself. But I just think that we're, we're critical to, to success, not only the success to athletes and student athletes, to providing life skills. So mm. I think the more that we can introduce this at, a, at, a, at, a, at all levels and, and make it a priority, um, that's where I think that's where we need to be. Agreed, agreed. So Grant, talk with us a little bit about your podcast because I was going through and I, I was I was listening to some some episodes and and for those of you who don't know the ninety cent ninety percent mental podcast the ninety percent mental podcast but Grant I was going through just just checking out some episodes uh, man I I saw I saw you have have some amazing and phenomenal guests um, just from from NFL players to NBA commentators to NASCAR drivers just everybody up and down and all around just elite performers all across just, just the world. So talk to us a little bit about, a little bit about your podcast. You know, um, it's, it's a, it's a, I love my podcast. Um, probably about three and a half years ago, four years ago when I created it, I probably had a different answer for you just because I, I had this love hate relationship with learning everything. Uh -huh. um, but when I, when I reflect on it though, I'm, I'm, that learning process is beautiful and I'm glad I went through it, but you know, learning how to edit and then mix and, and trying to get um, the guests in your show. It's a lot of energy, a lot of work. <laughs> uh, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I put my heels in and uh, dug in and, and, you know, and now I, I love it. But, you know, the, the show itself actually came out of a, uh, a project. It was when I was in my, in grad school, it was either doing a thesis or a special project. And I just thought doing a special project would be, would be more interesting. Mm. And, you know, working with my professor at the time, my advisor, uh, he was like, you know what, why don't you try on a, on doing a podcast? I'm like, well, what's a podcast? 
And he's like, well, you interview, you can interview people or you can just, you can just yourself and it's a show. And, and so I'm like, wow, this sounds kind of cool. Cause you know, back in school when I was getting my bachelor's, I wanted to be a TV broadcaster or radio broadcasters. You know, I was, I majored in communications, media arts. So I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm, I'm actually doing what I'm loving and I'm circling back on, on my initial uh, energies of when I went back to school. Um, so anywho, I never listened to a podcast and I got 10 episodes into it, still didn't listen to a podcast. And then I'm like, you know what? I probably should start listening to a podcast. And started going, okay. And I wasn't too far off what I was doing as far as the structure, but um, so it spawned off from a special project from school and, but it's been a beautiful uh, experience. Cause I, I inter- like you said, I interview um, just these elite, former and current athletes, coaches, sports psychologists, wellness experts, um, sporting executives. And, and all we do is we, just, we talk about the mental game. And we also talk about their journeys and, and, and how they overcame adversity and, and what made them so elite. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's just something that needs to happen more so. Um, because I think j- just just like you said, uh, the level of awareness needs to be increased um, for for everyday individuals, athletes, elite entertainers, and you know people outside of that uh, realm of influence as well. So uh, I, I definitely lo- love what you're doing, and I enjoy your show. As I, as I was telling you, I was listening to a, a few episodes um, just this morning, and I was like, wow, you're, you're you're asking some really good questions, and just hearing people's different definition about what is, you know, what, what does it mean for, for them in regards to, to mindset and, and just hearing people and their perspective on, on your show is just really, is really encouraging and also challenging at the same time. And I'm like, wow, I, maybe I need to, I need to step it up too. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I think, you know, when you think about the word like, or mental toughness mm-hmm. or ask the question, um, you know, when you reflect on your whole life, you know, what have you learned the most about yourself? Like, it's just fascinating when you just ask that question, uh, what have you learned about yourself? Because it makes people go inward. And we've, we've done a lot so far in our lives. And so just hearing people, you know, share their, their experience and then also just their, their, what their definition of mental toughness is. I've, I've had over 150 episodes and every single one of them has been different. So it's been kind of cool uh just to ask those questions and, and just do the show and, and you know overall it's been great how how would you define mental toughness so you know i've kind of i've kind of gone up like back and forth on this but truly for me uh mental toughness is is conquering the emotional hurricane mm. uh, so we we are faced with more face in, in performing anything, whether it's in sport or if it's in life or at the workplace, um, if we don't actually align and control our thoughts and emotions, we're going to get swooped up into that emotional hurricane. We'll start losing our control and then we're in the effect of it and a lot of negative bad things will happen. So I think for me, mental toughness is learning how to conquer the emotional hurricane by actually getting in the middle of that hurricane. And what happens in the eye of the hurricane? It's calm. So if we can train ourselves to be mentally tough during these mental, emotional hurricanes, that's how you become mentally tough, is train yourself to get really present and actually access your breath. Breath, visualization, and self-talk. Those three things, I believe if you can learn how to use those together in the moment, that will allow you to be mentally tough. And for me, I always say bending. Don't, get, don't let this emotional hurricane break you. Mm. Bend with it. And how do you bend with it? You breathe. But you got to get present. You got to get where your feet are. You got to train yourself to conquer that emotional hurricane. Or they can call you and say, "Grant, can you help us understand how to do these things?" <laughs> I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, so necessary. So, Grant, I'm curious to see to to ask you like, where do you? what's so what's next for you because now i mean you're, you're already helping elite performers you're, you're already helping the, these these amazing companies so so what is what does next look like for you you know the next it's it there's a lot actually um and i think and not to, to throw all these different things where i'm getting into i just i one of my messages now that i i've got my purpose 
and I've reignited who I am. I, I made a vow to myself to play a bigger game with my life. Mm. And I felt like I played a very narrow game for a long time. Um, and now that I have so much emotional space and I have all this, this these tools now, um, it's allowed me to just look at life differently and, and play a bigger game. So outside of running my company and writing my, you know, my book a year ago and having this podcast, you know, now I'm getting into online virtual training. Um, I'm starting to, to create meditation music uh, with my mentor. Um, you know, I'm going to write more books for sure. So it's just, um, and who knows what else I'm going to do? More keynote speaking. I've been doing that as of late. So, and who knows where that's going to take me. Um, the cool thing is I'm just, I'm open to it. Um, and I'm putting a lot of energy to the universe. And so, so far the universe is, is coming back with beautiful gifts and I'm, I'm open to it. So I don't know. I just, I'm just going to stay creative, stay open, uh, be vulnerable and, and, um, and see where it takes me. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. Just just being in a position to be open. And then when you allow yourself to be open, it's it's amazing to what, what comes in and what you're able to receive just by you being open. But then also, like you were talking about before, about you being in a position to serve. So you freely giving, and then also it allows you to freely receive. Right, exactly. So I'm excited to see, you know, where, where this journey takes you as you continue to rock, as you continue to roll and, and, and serve people at a high level. We're going to certainly uh, continue to stay connected. And before I let you go, Grant, I have to run you through the two minute drill. Okay. Okay. And, and the two minute drill, like I told you before, is just a, a few rapid fire questions where we like to have a little bit of fun uh, and then just to get inside the mind and, and we, we get the time ticking and, and then I let you, I, I let you go. You tell people where, where they can find you and then, and then we'll wrap it up. We'll put a bow on it, tie it with a ribbon and then send you on your way. Are you ready, Grant? I am ready. All right, here we go. Favorite food? Steak. Mmm. How do you like it cooked? Beamer. Mmm, okay. The last book you read? Um, right now, I, I just like, I'm almost done with it, so I'll say that one. It's The Spirit of the Anatomy. Your favorite podcast? Uh, my favorite podcast, I would say Finding Mastery from with Michael Gervais. That's a good one. Your favorite go-to Netflix show of preference? Oh man, that's tough. Man, that that is part of my life outside of what I do is Netflix. Um, you know, uh, I think I think it's just like yours, man. Last Chance You. I mean, that's I love it classic classic and then what's one tip that you want to share with a student athlete uh, you know it, it's something and i said it earlier but it's you know even at a, at a when i say student athlete that, that can mean college it can mean high school um or lower but you know what play a big game like mm. learn how to fail have a different, have a good relationship with failure and what success means to you. Learn how to be vulnerable, but man, like just play a big game and, and learn how to do that now. So, um, so that'd be my, my message. And there it is. Wow. That was powerful. I, I, I really, I really like that. Learn, learn how to learn how to play a big game and have a, have a good relationship with failure. Wow. That's, that's good stuff, Grant. You bet, man. Man, that's, 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 that's some really good stuff. So Grant, now let, please let people know where they can find you, how they can connect with you. And, and if they're looking to, to, to book you or anything like that, find out more information about your programs, please share with the people. For sure. I mean, I think the, uh, the mothership is my, is my website, which is gameface You can find my book, the next one up there, next one up mindset. Also my podcast, 90% mental, all my blogs, uh, but if you also want to follow me on social media, uh, my handle for IG and Twitter is the same, which is GFP Mindset. If you want to follow me on uh, Facebook and YouTube, it's Game Face Performance. And if you want to professionally link in with me on LinkedIn, you can find me as Grant Parr. 
there we are and there we go grant i want to i want to thank you once again for for taking the time to to, to come and to share your your story and, and and share your wisdom with us we, we greatly appreciate it awesome jonathan this was great man i uh, really appreciate you having me on and uh, love what you're doing thank you my friend Everybody out there, all the ballers out there, we want to encourage you to, to be sure to, to look up Grant, to, to get connected with him, and, and let him know that, that you found him after listening to this episode of the podcast. And, and we would love if you subscribe to the podcast uh, on all your platforms. You just type in Beyond the Ball. And until next time, my friends, this is Jonathan Jones signing out.